Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Salvation Today. We've got a powerful program for you today. On set with me this week is evangelist Josh Howard. Josh is seeing incredible miracles in his life and ministry, so you don't want to miss this. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the broadcast. Hey guys, this is another episode of Salvation Today. We are so excited that you guys are watching on the program today because today is a very special day and uh, I believe God really wants to speak to you. I believe He's got something very special for you today because today on set with me, I've got my good friend, evangelist Josh Howard. He's on set with us today. Yeah. Thanks for coming uh, and being with us today. Thanks, man. It's good to be here. Yeah. It's really exciting to have Josh on the program with us because Josh isn't normally in the United States. He's living in India now for the past, what, 11 years? Yeah, 11 years, yeah. 11 years you've been living in India, doing ministry work there, and now most recently you've been traveling all over the world preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, it's amazing seeing what God is doing in Josh's life. Literally thousands of people are being saved through his life, through his ministry, and so we're excited to have you on the program Thanks, today. Thanks, man. It's good to be here, bro. Yeah. yeah. So I want to get into your, your testimony today on the program, how you came to faith in Jesus. But before we get to that, I think it's important to know how God is using you. You're seeing miracles happen throughout your entire ministry. Yeah. God's doing ing incredible things through your life, through your ministry. And so I'm really excited because, you know, at the end of every program and at the end of the program today, we're going to pray for the sick. We're going to believe God for your miracle in Jesus' name. And uh, Josh is seeing incredible stuff happen through his ministry. And so tell us a little bit, what is God doing right now in your ministry? You know, some of the healing testimonies that you're seeing happen. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's been unbelievable, bro. I um, When we... So we go to Sri Lanka, uh, and, and we're seeing amazing things take place at our events. Um, and uh, it, it really blows my mind every time because it's it's it never gets uh it, it's not like you get used to it you know to see god move in such amazing ways and yeah. so i mean we've seen um uh, many, many deaf people, their ears pop open right in the middle of our events or as we're praying for them. Yeah. Uh, we had a lady uh, just a few months back who was, um, she had a stroke and was paralyzed on her left side and prayed for her and she came up on the stage dance, literally dancing because she was so excited. Amen. So both arms and legs and, and they were moving fine and it was unbelievable. Wow. Uh, we had a guy that was working and he fell out of a tree, a, a, a super high tree, hit many branches on the way down, had tore his bladder, and he didn't have money to, to see a doctor about it. And so every day he'd have to change his clothes multiple times because he couldn't control himself. Like he, uh, it was bleeding and leaking. And uh, at our event, we prayed for him and, and Jesus touched him and healed him and he gave his life to Jesus. There's just hundreds, man, of stories like that where where God is still alive, uh, Jesus is active, He's moving, He's touching people, yeah. and, and it's really incredible to see Him move like that. Come on, yeah. man, that's awesome. So, hey, we're going to pray for you, and Josh is going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. We're, we see miracles happen on this program. We see them happen in our meetings all the time, and we're going to pray and believe God for your miracle today in Jesus' name. So make sure you send in your prayer requests to info at chrismichelson.com. We'll print out every prayer request. We read over them. We'll pray over them. We'll lay hands on them. And we're going to expect God to do a miracle in your life as well. In Jesus' name. But Josh, you didn't grow up believing in the miraculous necessarily. You were taught otherwise, right? Yeah. 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 And there's churches out there that are teaching otherwise. They're saying miracles aren't for today. You know, God, yeah, God might do miracles, but they're only in His sovereign will. Like, we can't yeah. pray for people yeah. and to see them miraculously healed. But something happened in your life and ministry 
that changed your theology on this. Yeah. Tell us a little bit, how did that happen and what happened in your life? Yeah, so let me start at the at the beginning. So I, I grew up in a church that I'm, <laughs> they, they didn't teach this, they didn't <laughs> preach this. Um, I never heard a sermon on the Holy Spirit. Wow. It was kind of the forgotten part of God. Like uh, I always say it was like the wicked stepchild we kept in the basement. Like yeah. uh, keep him hidden, don't talk about him. Yeah, yeah he's there, but it's, we, we can't talk about him very much. And, <laughs> And so I had my pastors growing up basically said, healings don't happen anymore. Those gifts are not for today. Wow. And, and that was what I kind of was brought up believing. Yeah. And then I moved to India and started seeing it happen all over the place. Like I, I started training, when I first moved to India, I started training young uh, church planters, young guys that were gonna go out and start new churches. Yeah. And when I asked them how they came to faith, Yeah all of their testimonies, man, like all of them with, without a doubt was something like my mom was sick and a pastor came and prayed and Jesus healed her and our wow. whole family came to Christ or my sister was demon possessed and a pastor prayed and Jesus kicked out the demon and my whole family came to Christ or, or one of my guys, like he was deathly ill. The doctors had said, you know, nothing they can do. A pastor came and prayed, and the next day he was up, and, wow. and Jesus touched him and healed him, and that's what led his whole family to Jesus. And so I, I thought to myself, like, either all of these people, hundreds of them are lying, yeah. or my pastor was wrong, yeah. right? And, uh, and yeah, pastors can be wrong sometimes, right? <laughs> so we all can. Um, but so when I, when I moved and saw that, I mean, everything... Uh, everything changed. My my mindset began to change, and I began to realize that yes, the same Jesus yeah. that that did the miracles in the Bible is the same Jesus that's alive today, Amen. and he's he's ready to touch people, he's ready to heal people, he's ready to forgive us, yeah. he loves us, yeah. and and he desperately wants a relationship with us, and he's going to show himself and reveal himself in yeah. in many many different ways, wow. and so all of it's possible. Amen. Uh, and so yeah, my. My entire life and, and mindset changed. I don't know that my uh, my my pastor that I grew up with <laughs> would agree with me anymore, but that's okay. Yeah. Uh, God's God's moving in great ways, man. But you can't you can't argue with testimony. Oh yeah, absolutely. You can't argue with legit. This person had this problem. They were going through it. Somebody prayed, they came to a meeting, yeah. a, a pastor came to their house, somebody laid hands on them, somebody prayed according to the Word of God, yep. and that person was instantaneously healed and made well in Jesus' name. You can't yeah. argue with that. No, absolutely not, man. You know? And it happened all the time, bro. All the time in the Word. Yeah. yeah all yeah. the time. And we're continuing to see it happen today because the Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Like, yeah. He never changes. Yeah. And so we're seeing that happen. The Word of God, we see it happen all the way through Scripture, and you're seeing it happen in your ministry. Now, that happened 11 years ago. You moved to India. You start seeing some of these things happen. Yeah. But then there was a transition in your ministry where you went from, okay, yeah, I see that happen, and, I, and I'm open to that. Yeah. I believe it can happen. <laughs> yeah. But there's a difference between believing that something can happen and then believing for it to actually happen. Yeah. How did that happen in your ministry where you changed from believing, okay, yeah, I believe this can happen, but now I'm going to activate my faith and pray for people yeah. and actually expect something to happen? Yeah, yes, because because of my background, I would never prayed like that for people, yeah. right? Because yeah. it just wasn't ever taught or or even modeled for me. I never, I never even saw it happen, right? Yeah. And so what changed was actually a, a quote by Reinhard Bonnke. Yeah. Um, I was sitting in my office in India and I was uh, watching him on YouTube and somebody had asked him a question that I had had, I mean, I had had the same question much in my life because yeah. I, growing up hearing all that from, from my leaders about this doesn't happen anymore. There was something in my spirit that kind of pushed against that, mm. but I, I didn't see anything else, right? Like I, I never saw anything else or learned anything else. Yeah. And so when I moved to India and began to see all that, I, I, desperately wanted it to happen in my own life and ministry. And so I was sitting in my office watching uh, Reinhardt on YouTube and somebody asked him a question and said, basically, Reinhardt, why are you seeing literally hundreds of thousands of healings take place in your ministry yeah. uh, where 
hundreds of crutches are going up in the air and wheelchairs are being brought up. Like how, how are you seeing that? Yeah. And we're not seeing it in America or we're not seeing it in some of these other places. And, yeah. and, uh, and Reinhardt said, I'll never forget it, man. It, it literally changed the direction of my life in ministry. Wow. He said, if you want to see the power of God in your life, yeah. go to where the gospel has never been proclaimed and his power will meet you there. Amen. Okay. Yeah. So I took that, and the first time I went to Sri Lanka, okay, to preach to thousands of people, yeah. I never prayed for people like that. Yeah. And I stood up on that stage with faith, knowing that Jesus wants to move, he's yeah. able to move. Amen. And with that quote in my heart and mind, yeah. um, preach to the crowd about God's saving grace, about how amazing and loving he is. Amen. And then I said, you know, basically, Jesus wants to show you today his love. He wants to confirm what I've just preached to you yeah. uh, by showing that he's powerful, he's able, he can do it. Yeah. And so the first time, man, in my life, I, I prayed over a group of people and we saw tons of people get healed oh, and, wow. and touched and set free. And, and uh, it was at that moment in my life that I realized that, listen, this isn't about me, it's not about you, it's not about us as the vessel, yeah. but it's Jesus who's healing people. Yeah. And if we just step out there and believe that and have faith in that, Amen. he's still moving today in the same way that he did all throughout scripture. Yeah, yeah, you know, somebody once said that if you take a, a scissors and you cut out every miraculous thing that ever happened in the Bible, we would have a literally holy Bible yeah. <laughs> because there would be holes all the way through it. This yeah. entire book is a book of miracles. Yeah, God is a God of miracles. Life is a miracle. Yeah. You know, the fact that God can take nothing and create something out of it is miraculous. Yeah. L life that we actually live is really sustained by the hand of God. That is absolutely yeah. supernatural. Yeah. And so we have to say that if God is supernatural, then, and He doesn't change, then He's the same today as He was all the way through Scripture. He's the same God doing the same things, and we can expect the same things happen Amen. as we pray today yeah. uh, for all of you guys. And so we're going to pray at the end of the program. We're going to expect God for your miracle, expect God to heal you, and uh, we're going to pray for your miracle to happen today. So make sure you send in your prayer request to info at chrismichelson.com, and we're going to pray for you and believe God for your miracle in Amen. Jesus' name. Now, Josh, you know, a lot of people think that if somebody is an evangelist, somebody's a pastor, uh, that they probably had the most perfect upbringing. <laughs> they were a Christian, you know, they came out of the womb praising God, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. and they've been a perfect Christian their whole life, never had any issues, never had any challenges. Like literally, I've had people think when I've shared my testimony, they thought, wow, I would never would have known that, or, yeah. you know, and so, Sometimes we have these preconceived ideas when somebody's in ministry that they've never gone through something. But you had some challenges in your life. You grew up a Christian, grew up in a Christian home. Yeah. But there were some definite challenges in your life where you could have easily taken pain and taken your situation and said, you know what, I don't know about this whole Jesus thing. I'm yeah. going to go a different direction. Yeah. But you didn't. You stayed true. You followed God. Tell us your story. How did... You yeah. come to faith in Christ in that way. Yeah, so I yeah I, I grew up in a, a Christian home, like you said. Um, but when I was about four years old, my mom and dad divorced. And my dad left and really wasn't a, a big part of my life as a, as a child. My, my mom and I lived with my grandparents, her mom and dad. And uh, they were an amazing family uh, and, and took me to church every Sunday. And, and uh, my grandpa was a deacon in the church. And... Had a, had a great childhood with my mom and my grandparents. Like, it, it was very good. But as I got a little bit older, um, the pain of not having my father around really began to affect my life. There was, there was like a hole in my heart because of that. Yeah. Uh, I did, I, he didn't come to uh, see me very often, didn't call very often, you know, stuff like that. And, and I, I longed to have that father's love in my life, and I, I just didn't. Um, so my grandfather kind of filled that void for me. Um, and uh, when I was 16, it was my grandfather and my uncle, okay, who really, they just 
all growing up, they, they taught me about Jesus, they helped me, they, they, they were mentors to me, they really filled that father void in my life. And at 16, my grandfather, who was the rock of our family, uh, died of brain cancer, and it, it wrecked me, dude. Um, it, it, uh, uh, it was like three weeks after my 16th birthday, and then a month after that, um, my uncle, who was my youth minister, he was the one that, he, he helped me write my first sermon. He, I mean, he like, he was the reason, man, that, that I was so involved in church and, and so, I, I loved Jesus so much. And him and his wife were involved in youth ministry at the church and all of that. Um, a month after my grandpa died, she one day was arrested by the police. I won't say on on TV what she was arrested for, but she, we, no, none of us had any idea. She was living a, a secret life. And so I woke up one day, man, yeah. a month after my grandpa died, I was in depression, mourning, all those things. Yeah. And my aunt, who was, her and her husband were, were like, a, like a spiritual pillar in my life. Wow. She was in prison. I never saw her again, wow. ever. Really? No, ever, even to this day, I've never saw her or heard from her again. Wow. My uncle, uh, I mean, emotionally, he was a mess because he had no idea she was involved in all this stuff. And the church was broken because, right, they were in ministry and all those things. And then my mom, because of all of this, she became a, an alcoholic, began to drink every day. And so all of a sudden, man, my life just blew up. And uh, what you said is right, man. I could have gone in, in many different directions at that point in my life. And it was during that season that God wrapped his arms around me. And he showed me that, Josh, listen, I'm your father. I'm the one that you need to hold on to. I am, I'm the dad you always wanted to have. And so don't, you, you don't need to worry about all this. I'm here. And it was at that moment that I realized that when I cry, he cries. When, when I'm in pain, he hurts. When I'm alone, he holds me. When I'm crying, he hears me. And, and so I want to say, you know, to the, to the people watching today that wherever you're at, whatever's going on, like uh, if you go through a, a situation like I went through, God's arms are there. He's ready to hold you. He's ready to heal your heart. He's ready to love you and, 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 and heal your brokenness because that's what really happened to me during that season. And so in a, in a season that could have very easily destroyed everything where I would get angry at God or run away or whatever. It was in that season that God met me, healed me, and really began to set me on the path to do what I'm doing now. Um, and uh, long story short, um, a few years later, Jesus completely healed my heart, changed my heart. My dad came back to Jesus. Uh, he, he came to me and apologized for not being around. He cried, I cried. And because Jesus healed my heart and because God became my father, um, I was able to forgive my dad. Um, and now him and I have a great relationship and, and it's, it's been cool, bro. But, but it was a, it was a rocky season, man. Um, but God was there, bro. Amen. Yeah. You know, and I love that because God, he is our father, right? And so Jesus, I love how Jesus, he didn't refer to him as just, God. He didn't refer to God as, you know, um, king or master or a lot yeah. of these other uh, words that we can use to describe God. Yeah. He described him as father. Yeah. Right. And a lot of theologians agree that at some point in Jesus's life, before he turned 30 and started his ministry, his own father probably also passed away. Yeah. Because we don't ever hear anything about Joseph in any of the gospel stories. Yeah. So most theologians believe Jesus, the Son of God, His own earthly Father, yeah. probably passed away at, his, at some point, and even Jesus had to cling to God the Father, yeah. right, as yeah. His Father. And so and that is so powerful. I wonder if there are some people out there watching today that don't know God as God the Father. They don't know Jesus. Maybe they're away from God. They're in sin. Maybe there's some people that are backslidden or they're going through some things that they need Jesus today. Yeah. And yeah. I wonder if you can just take like the next two minutes and, and just tell them, share with them the gospel yeah. and lead them in a prayer 
of salvation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when I was a kid growing up, um, my mom said, uh, she, she tried to scare me a little bit, and, and she would say something like, um, Josh, God is always watching. Um, it was never God as father, it was always God as judge or somebody that was always ready to find your faults and find your uh, negative things. And so she would say, God has a book and he's writing down all the bad things you've ever done. And one day he's gonna read it in front of all your family and all your friends. And so you better be good, Josh, because, uh, because God's watching and he's writing down everything. And as I got older and began to really experience God as father, I realized two things. One, my mom was right partially, halfway. Uh, God does have a book, and He is writing down all the bad things that we've done. But the good news is, is that when Jesus came, the reason why He came, one of the major reasons why He came was to erase the book. That He erases all the bad things that we've done. That's the good news of Jesus. And so because God loves us so much, He sent His Son Jesus to this earth in order to erase your book. And so if you're like me, I had like not just one book, I had like hundreds of books, okay? Like a lot of books, there was a lot of bad. And on the cross, Jesus completely took it away. He erased every book with his blood. And so right now today, wherever you're sitting, wherever you're at, no matter how many books you have, if it's, if it's one or hundreds, when you call out to Jesus, he will meet you, he will heal you, and He will erase every single thing that's in that book to give you a complete new record, a new life in Him today. And so if that's, if that's you right now and you want to accept Jesus into your life, would you just pray this prayer with me right now? Just say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know that I need you. And so today, Jesus, erase every book. Forgive me of my sins. I will follow you every day of my life. Amen. Listen, if you just prayed that prayer, God has completely erased your books. He's given you a new life, and he's ready to meet you and do some amazing things in your life. Congratulations. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, thank you, Josh. That's a powerful... You know, friends, it, Josh is absolutely right. This is a, a very special moment. In fact, the Bible says that all of heaven rejoices over one person who comes to repentance. And so today we want to hear from you. If you've made that decision to follow Jesus, get in contact with us. Let us know that you prayed with Josh today to receive Christ because we would love to stay in touch with you and pray for you and help you in any way that we can. Uh, right after this short break, we're going to come back. Josh and I are going to pray, and we're going to believe God for your miracles. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Evangelist Chris Michelson is preaching the gospel in some of the most unreached and challenging countries around the world. Just last year, their ministry saw 400,950 people come to faith in Christ near the Middle East in the face of great danger. Yet God has given Evangelist Michelson and his team divine strategy and divine protection to see such a great harvest. Please consider partnering financially with the ministry of Evangelist Chris Michelson and help them reach one million people for Jesus Christ this year near the Middle East. The challenges in this part of the world are great, but as we change one heart at a time by sharing the gospel, God begins to change a nation and then the entire world for his glory. Your monthly partnership or one-time gift of any amount will go directly into seeing thousands and even millions of people near the Middle East come to faith in Jesus Christ. Together with Evangelist Michelson and his team, you can change the world by bringing the gospel to the most unreached nations on the planet. All gifts are tax deductible and go directly to the soul-winning nonprofit ministry of Chris Michelson Evangelistic Ministries. To partner financially, go to chrismichelson.com forward slash donate to partner today. Your partnership in the harvest is needed now, more than ever, to see the nation saved. Well, welcome back, my friends. Uh, we want to take just the next couple of minutes and pray for your needs, pray for your miracles. So if you're there today and you've got a need, you've submitted it. We have them here. We've printed them out. We're going to pray for you in Jesus' name. If you're watching and maybe you haven't sent in your prayer requests, I have good news for you. You don't have to send them in. We're going to pray for you anyway. 
We love to hear the prayer requests. We love to lay hands on them. But if for some reason you haven't sent them in, we're still gonna pray for you as well. So I want you to do this uh, right where you are. Take your, take your hand, take one hand, put it on the body part that needs a healing, that needs a miracle. If you've got too many problems, just put one hand on your head, lift your other hand to Jesus and close your eyes and let's pray and expect God to do something in your life. I'm gonna have Josh just go ahead and lead us out in prayer right now in Jesus name. Oh, Jesus, we are so thankful that you are so good. You are so great. We learned in the story today that you, that one word from you changes everything. That you love and you have compassion on us and you have mercy on us. And we are so grateful that you have the power, the ability, and the willingness to change our lives. And so there are so many prayer requests sitting in front of us right now. And we pray, God, that you would touch them and that you would heal every person, that you would provide for them. That if there are people watching right now that are hurting and broken, that you would reach down from heaven and touch them and change their lives. All sicknesses go right now in Jesus' name. All chains be broken in Jesus' name. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your compassion. And I pray that you would open heaven right now, Father, and pour your compassion and mercy and love on every person watching in Jesus' name. God, we just thank you right now for each and every person who has submitted prayer requests for every single person watching. And we just speak to all of these needs. We command healing to come in the name of Jesus. Sickness has to go in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray right now you would touch each and every person. We just thank you, God, for touching them. Thank you for healing them. And we just expect something to change right now. Healing to come right now. In Jesus' name, and God, we will give you all the glory and all the praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. My friends, I want you, I want to challenge you right now. Take this moment, step up, stand up, do something you couldn't do before. Expect something to happen. Expect something to change in your body. And when it does, let us know how God has healed you. Let us know... um, you know how God has touched you today in Jesus' name. Well, Josh, it's been a pleasure having you on the program today. Thank you so much. Uh, we've got Josh's uh, information there on the screen if you want to get in touch with him or l- learn more about his ministry. And uh, we just are, are so thankful to have you on the program today. And we look forward to having you on again next time in Jesus' name. Well, friends, that's all the time we have for today. We love you. God bless you. And we'll see you again very soon on Salvation Today. Bye-bye. This program has been made possible by the friends and financial partners of Chris Michelson Evangelistic Ministries. To learn more about Chris Michelson Evangelistic Ministries, go to our website at chrismichelson.com or write to us at P.O. Box 771102, Orlando, Florida 32877. You can email us your prayer requests by sending them to info at chrismichelson.com. And don't forget to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash evangelist Chris Michelson.